Okay, today is Sunday, and I have a lot happening here in the kitchen currently. I always like want to film these videos, and then I'm like, but my my kitchen isn't finished. There's still this part that I still need to paint and put trim on, and this over here isn't done, and my dishes are still not done, and Jake is working on our light fixture, so I can't record what I'm doing because it's not picture perfect. But I'm just going to stop doing that because I'm a real ass person and we do real things here. And so what I'm going to do right now, we have a lot of stuff that we have to get done today. We are going to make the raspberry filling for the toaster strudels that we're going to make, like the homemade toaster strudels. We are going to um, try to recreate the, the Ponchero's burritos. Um stuff again so that means cilantro jasmine rice that means marinating chicken that means soaking black beans um and we are going to tackle this complete shit show of a pantry that is behind me you guys it is it's like spilling out onto my um stove it is up here on my fridge it is over here on my table and this does not work for me the feng shui is not feng shuiing it is very um, chaotic in here and so I have to get this dealt with because this is this is not how we live this is not how we live this is more of like ah, this is what we want clean tidy nice okay so we're gonna rinse the raspberries we're gonna get the beans soaking and once Jake gets this done then I can clean up the dishes I did not get to the dishes yesterday there weren't a lot of dishes yesterday the kids ate cereal and um, just like snacky stuff yesterday because we did a big grocery haul um, so, yeah, normally I would put the kitchen to bed, but last night we were just, we were beat. Like, the day just flew by, and we just didn't get to it. So, let's get the raspberries that we got two of them for free using our member rewards at hy V here in town. Uh, and then we picked up two more, so we're going to make some really yummy filling for the kids to have some breakfast stuff. Every inch of you is perfect from the bottom to the top. Yeah, my mama, she told me, don't worry about your size. She said, boys like a little more booty than the night. I always want to save these things. Like, I feel like I can reuse them. And at one point, I was saving them. I will find a use for them, I swear. And then never found a use for them. So I ended up just throwing them away. wish there was a more organic way to package stuff that you know made sense that you could realistically package things and ship them so these raspberries are it says basket and bushel company uh it says fresh raspberries guarantee i looked these up on the website once to see if they were organic and i can't remember what we found out no, maybe that was the blueberries because I wanted the blueberries to get the seeds from them. Actually, we did that. We So if you want to grow blueberries from groceries, if you want to grow your own blueberries from grocery store blueberries, you need to make sure that they were grown in the United States or whatever, I guess, country you're in. Because if they weren't, they have to like spray them with some sort of something in order to ship them from another country and that makes it to where um, they won't grow. So that's what I looked up, but it's the same company as this. And these videos are probably gonna be a little longer. People suggest that your YouTube videos should be like 10 or 15 minutes long, that people's interest doesn't really um, stay past then, but it's just not realistic for the things that I have going on. Especially if I'm trying to like motivate, inspire, teach other people, you know, because like, you know how many times I've had um, Jay Morell in my kitchen with me or Shay Elliott or even um, Becky with Acre Homestead? Yeah, all of them. Like I turn their videos on and I appreciate the longer videos because I listen to them while I'm cooking, while I'm canning, while I'm cleaning. So... I'm going to have some longer videos, and if you don't like it, that's fine, but if you could like the video before you leave and go watch something else, that super helps me a lot, and I appreciate it. I picked them up at thrift stores for like 50 cents. These are Presto brand. I think they're like mini 
pressure canners. Um, the lids that they have, they like twist on and they have this little like valve stemmy thing, like what you would put a weight on. However, I don't use them for that because like the seal is all like crumbly and not awesome. I very rarely use the lids, but they are very, very thick bottomed. So anytime I'm making like a filling or a syrup or a gravy, I want a really heavy bottomed pan so that way it's not burning my stuff, you know what I mean? So just a little added protection between the burner and the pot. And we've been having some mice happening as the weather gets colder. Just been washing all of the dishes, all of the pots and pans, because we only have one cupboard and that, in the whole entire kitchen we have one cupboard and that's um, where we keep our pots and pans. And uh, that's where I keep finding the little mouse poops. And we have traps set everywhere. And we are like consistently catching mice of all sizes, teeny tiny ones, big giant mama mice, like, and anyways, all I can imagine is that there were mice playing in my pots and pans. So I just washed them before I use them to avoid, you know, eating mouse droppings, because that would be disgusting. And for any of you that haven't been here before, we are redoing our kitchen and it's just an ongoing project just because we don't have like the solid time or materials to just non-stop do it, I guess. So we redid these walls here with this pallet wood, free, didn't cost me anything. And so this is where we have our knives because I don't want knives in drawers. Anyways, yesterday when I got home from the grocery store, I saw one little mouse poop up here. There's, there's nothing around this. There's nothing, there's nothing around this. So these mice have to be climbing up this wall to get up to this so all of my knives are now in my sink right here because i have to wash them because all i can think is that there were mice touching them we have our pan washed we have our raspberries rinsed we are going to i'm actually going to go get my mom's card table that she brought up here for my son's graduation and put our our overflow stuff here onto the card table so I can, you know, use my stove. And we'll get the raspberries at least going. We will get the beans soaking in this um, silver bowl here. What is it? What is this? What is this material? Silver? No. Metal? <laughs> I don't know. We'll put it in this shiny metal-y bowl, okay? What is it? What is it? Justin Rhodes' wife uses it all the time. What's the word for it? Stainless steel. Use your words, Tanya. Okay, so we'll we'll do chicken and beans and stainless steel things um, after we get that the raspberries going. We can make our little toaster strudels. And this um, raspberry filling, you have to kind of stay on top of it. It doesn't, you know, burn. It shouldn't. We just have it on a medium heat. But you still need to stir it. And it smelled really like tart and sour when we started. And now that the sugar is mixed in, it smells good. We might add some maple syrup. What do you making? Uh, you know those toaster strudels? Yeah. And then I'm gonna make, remember the toaster scramblers that had the eggs and bacon in them and you like put them in the toaster and it had cheese and eggs and bacon inside of them. They're kind of like a pop tart but with eggs and bacon and shit in them. I mean, I so good. The same, but I don't, I don't I'll probably make those tomorrow. Okay, let me start the dishes. I got this Pioneer Woman. You put your soap in it, you, you push this little thing and the soap comes out of right here. I got this one instead of the the Walmart brand one because it's cute and it's Pioneer Woman. But the other day, this got like stuck or something and all of my soap ran out of it and this is like good soap. This is the good, uh, this one. So I was really pissed that this whole thing of soap just drained out of here. So we'll see what happens. My dad is calling.
the amount of seeds in these raspberries is crazy. Like, I don't think the kids mind the seeds, but nobody's trying to eat this many seeds. Look at all these seeds. I'm going to give these to the birds. They will like them, but the consistency of this is already, like, good. Focus, camera. Focus. See? This is for the scrap bowl. So anytime you see a bowl or even, like, a bucket or a pot sitting around in my kitchen with food scraps in it, it's because we feed the animals with them. A little bit more sugar. You could use maple syrup. You could use honey. Um, the thing with honey is if you're using it just to sweeten, that's fine. If you're using it to get any sort of like health benefits from it, you want to add it into like the end of your recipes because when honey gets to a boiling point, you're killing all of the good in it. So anything beneficial in the honey that you would be using it for, once it reaches a boiling point, that's all gone. So you quite literally would be wasting it if you were using it just for a medicinal um, purpose. So I guess you could try to just put a little bit of sugar in it and then get the lemon juice in it to break the raspberries down and then uh, just add the honey in afterwards. I mean, you can try that someday. We can try it using honey. But since I'm not gonna eat these uh, I just used sugar, just regular white sugar. Okay, we could also try some maple syrup. Let's try that. Actually, let's not. We're gonna use sugar since we've already poisoned the children with the sugar. I'm just gonna eyeball it and put a little bit in because if it's too much sugar, the kids are definitely not gonna complain about it. So I put about a half a cup of sugar in there. So that's about one and a half cups of sugar total and I also didn't measure the lemon juice the lemon juice is just to help those berries break down so the raspberries are already very tart so with that lemon juice it just makes it really really like sour and so that's why you're adding the sugars to offset that sourness we'll get it back up and we'll get it to boil we want it to be a rolling boil even when we're stirring it. When you're cooking something and it comes to a boil and you put your spoon in it, typically like the bubbles stop and it, it stops boiling. Man, I look like a swamp monster today. It's Sunday, don't worry. I'm in comfy clothes. But I do have my apron on today. Winning! It's got goats on it. We used to have goats, for those of you that don't know. We will have goats again, just not until we get, you know, fencing made out of concrete. <laughs> because the goats get out so so easily don't they boo yep. poxy you was hurting again you need cbd oil and some sour cream mm -hmm. okay let's get foxy some cbd and sour cream done this is a very thick yeah, and I'm gonna let this cool not like completely cool, but cool a lot because we are gonna um, Bake these and I don't want it to all just kind of melt out. So I don't want it to be super hot like this. I want it to You know hold its form So finish the dishes and then we will do our chicken marinade and then we will get to this disaster that keeps staring at me Some Coffee. We use protein powder in our coffee. <clears throat> a little bit of creamer, creamer and a scoop of protein powder and some ice. So good. It's like a milkshake, but better. This looks so fucking cool. What? The Alexa looks so fucking cool. <laughs> Alexa, play banana pie, but no darkies. Okay, so typically I would use... Um, parchment paper for this. Anytime you see me using aluminum foil, it's because my parchment paper is gone. We typically use aluminum foil uh, for grilling purposes or to like cover a, a rack in the stove. I'm just going to thin this out a little bit so it's not so 
thick. Yeah. And I'm also going to flip it over. I buttered this surface just to avoid any like sticking. If we were using parchment paper, um, I might butter it for this part, but to bake on it, I wouldn't need to butter it. So we're just going to kind of make these into a square a little bit. I guess the shape of them doesn't really matter. It's just the function of being able to eat them as long as they're edible, right? Okay. And then we're going to cut these into, you know, toaster strudel sizes. So let's just go down the middle. And then let's do like this. I hate how pizza cutters are so wobbly. They're like this. Maybe it's just our pizza cutter. But then we have lines like this and it's not amazing. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. So like this. I mean, this is gonna be a wonky shaped one, but that's okay. You guys can make them perfectly square if you want to. And then um, like this. That way they're uniform to each other, you know what I mean? Just like that. Okay, so each pie crust is only going to make four of these. That's disappointing. So it's going to be, you know, price effective to make our own pie crust. But for right now, just to test these out, because I've never made these before. Here's our softened cream cheese. We're going to bring it over here. We're going to add some powdered sugar and some vanilla extract to this. Here's our lovely filling. Okay, look through our messy pantry here. Here's a ton of powdered sugar. We're gonna set this over here. We're just gonna do mm, like a cup of powdered sugar. I really need to put one of these into one, I need to put our powdered sugar into these gallon jars. You guys, if you've never watched our videos before, we have flies so bad. We live real close to a chicken uh, farm, a big like chicken factory setting. And um, the flies here are out of this world. In fact, they provide us with um, strips that you'll, you'll see them in our house hanging all the time and they're really disgusting and terrible. But look, see the flies are just every, these are clean dishes and they're just, all over the place. It's super, super stoked about it. So you're gonna add, I don't know, we'll add three like teaspoons because it doesn't take a lot to melt this um, powdered sugar down. Just a little blurp. I know that it's hard because I'm not giving you guys accurate measurements, but most of what I cook and bake is truly just kind of, I mean, once you have kind of a basic knowledge of how to, you know, make a frosting or a glaze or how to make a filling or how to make a gravy, it truly is, I would even go as far as calling it like an art form. You just want to make it your own. I mean, that's how new recipes are created, right? Okay, so we've got that good mix. We're going to start incorporating this cream cheese in here. And if this ends up being not as thick as I would like it to be, we will just add a little bit more powdered sugar. But I think it's gonna end up really well. That's why we wanted that cream cheese in there. Plus I didn't wanna do, if I was just doing a powdered sugar glaze, that would be more for like donuts or on top of um, like cakes or, or muffins or rolls. So just get that good and mixed up. Okay, so we are gonna actually take this fork off of here and rinse it because I'm going to use that to press down the sides of this. I'm going to set this off to the side. We are going to take some of our cream cheese powdered sugar. Let me bend you guys down a little bit so you can see. And we're just going to put, and this will also help any of that tartness um, from the raspberries. You, you guys could do this with blueberries, blackberries, strawberries. You could do this with any berry. It would be delicious. Probably cherries. We can experiment with them. 
Anyways, I'm getting kind of close to the edge, but I'm being mindful not to go too far because we have to, um, I'm going to actually put it on all of them because extra cream cheese is never a bad thing. Just a nice thin layer. That way you have it on both sides. Okay. Anyways, I don't remember what I was saying. Yeah, all the berries. And so I'm going to bake these first ones in the oven. I have it preheated to 450. So just follow the instructions of whatever... Um, crust or pastry you're using just follow those baking instructions I was trying not to get the powdered sugar mix all over because it is very sticky very very sticky but I also want these to be like full of fruit I do not want there to be just like a little bit so we're gonna just kind of pile the fruit up in the center I know you guys can't probably see that one very well. We're just going to kind of pile it in the center because as it bakes, it's going to spread out once it warms. Put a little bit more on that one. Oh, wait. So this only made three? That's sad. Definitely going to be, I think, more cost effective. This one's pretty big, though. That could be, like, two. Same with this one. Definitely going to be more cost effective to... Um, make your own pie crust or pastry crust and uh, or make these smaller either way your yield is still the same okay so we are going to can you guys see what I'm doing here we're gonna take our tops and place them over and we're gonna take our fork let me move our thing out of the way. We're going to take our fork and I want these to be like good and sealed. So I'm just kind of kind of stagger them with my fork so that way we don't have a bunch of leaking happening. And this one, how should we do this one? Maybe we could like fold this up and under. This will maybe just be extra doughy right here because there's a little bit less up on this side I don't want it to squeeze out of course if you guys did these you know all uniform and they were all square see right here it's gonna poof out a little bit if you get some leakage out of it I think it's fine if you don't care then that's even better I just don't want it to be messy for them is what I'm trying to accomplish here I'm gonna peel this up without spilling any of it out of here Okay. Oh yeah, definitely some some oozing. We're gonna go around this way. I'm just gonna kind of fold it up on itself. Okay, and then I'm I'm gonna bunch these a little bit, so we're kind of sealing the edges. Maybe we could do that first before we kind of staple them down with the fork. Just to kind of give it a little bit better seal. I've also buttered this um, foil that's on the tray behind us because I don't want these to stick while they are in the oven. So just like this, it's just like a pocket of fruit and um, filling. So I'm going to put it over here on the tray, the baking tray. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. This next pie crust that we use, we'll try to make the shapes a little smaller, I think, and then try to get it to where, I don't know, we really aren't going to be able to get square, square stuff unless we put a lot of extra work and time into it. And I don't have time for that. And my kids, if I was making this to like take it to a dinner or gift it to someone, I definitely would take the time to do it. But um, this is 
just for Jake and the kids, and they quite literally don't care what it looks like. Let's get a spatula. You can see them like browning around the edges. I don't know if that's because of the foil that we're using, um, but we're gonna flip them over just so we get. I don't want to see. Yeah, they're definitely like toasting on the bottom. So you can see these are kind of toasty on the bottoms of them. I could smell that it was toasting up. So there's our color that we were looking for. I'm just gonna flip them over for, I don't know, five more minutes or so. Doesn't take long for pie crust to do the things. Kind of low key, you wanna like fry up a few eggs. Like it doesn't even have to be big. Like a few pieces of bacon, a couple of eggs, and make a really nice like cheese sauce and make a couple of these like egg and bacon ones so if someone didn't want a sweet one, they could have a savory one in the morning. And I personally love those the most. So I could actually use einkorn flour, has a much lower like glycemic um, spike. Um, it's like an ancient flour. Shay with Elliot Homestead talks about it. You get it from Jovial. So I could probably make some pie crust with this einkorn flour that I eat and make myself some strudels. Make myself some toaster strudels. Um, I have another full bag of that too, so we might try that. Not right now, we have lots of shit happening right now. So we're gonna clean up our mess, wait for these to be done, and then we will check them out. Pull these out. This one exploded. A couple of them have exploded. Ooh, it's very, very hot. But they smell amazing. So we're gonna get them Whoa. off of here, maybe get them on a cooling rack. It's already done. And yes, I'm gonna shut the stove off right now because we still have to wait for a while for that other pie crust to come to room temperature. So we're just gonna shut that off now so that we're not wasting heat, electricity, all the things. These turned out so good. I just popped a bunch of them into the freezer and the kids can just grab them and warm them up as they go. For us.